Remember this? Now, you're probably wondering, where's the car? And that's kind of what we're here to talk about. This build series did not go exactly according to plan. Well, it did. It was a 10% Cayenne. That then became a 90% Cayenne and took it up. Welcome to episode four. So Mike, we're about to go on an emotional roller coaster. Uh, coming off of North Carolina, boom, Bam. car was there. Yeah, was it feeling, was at 80%. I was time. feeling really good. We did get to take it on some trails. For like 10 minutes. Yeah, it was pretty quick. Ethan was literally running around the car, yeah. getting as much as he could. I think Ethan put more miles on his sneakers than we did. That's on the, super fair. <laughs> and in the other year, I was tried a shot. So we're coming back from North Carolina. We have an 80% Cayenne. Today, we need to explain why it became quite literally Today, a 0% Cayenne. Today, you need to explain. Did I say we again? You need to explain. All right, I need to come clean. Time was on our side. All we had left was we were adding our Baja Designs lights. We were doing our Thule, a rooftop tent, our Thule awning. Mm -hmm. We wanted to do a few accessories just throughout the car, and then we had our fun build out, cabin tree in the rear. But we had time for all those things. So we were honestly mm -hmm. chipping away pretty slowly, admittedly, yeah. until we got a phone call. It was our brand director, Michael Herzen, who had the great idea, basically three days before, a massive event in Colorado that we should be sending the Cayenne across the country for Grid Life Alpine Horizons. Our boy Essa was there, so he was actually going to set up for the weekend, and we were like, hey, what's the perfect support vehicle? Literally why we made this vehicle yeah. was to go to things like this. So with those three days notice, we did what we could in that amount of time. And Michael himself helped us on the car. Yes, I will did. say that. So the late hours of the night. Yeah, kind of putting some finishing touches. Michael, what are you doing? Put a lipstick on a pig. Not to mention we had a, a magazine photo shoot to get done before Colorado. Yeah, that's right. But look, our new sights were set from taking our time to let's make it happen. Let's freaking go. I was super excited for it. And then there was that bonus that Ethan, remember our camera guy, buddy, and coworker, would have a great opportunity to shoot the Cayenne, take our time, spend a full day in the mountains, really do it justice for all the work we had to put into it. But there's no way you were gonna go off-roading by yourself in Colorado in a brand new rig. I'm basically as rookie as it comes <laughs> with that stuff. I do not know the area, I don't know the capabilities, I don't know what to expect. So I put that in the hands of our friends at Berg, who were up the road in Denver, who also have three badass Cayennes. They have two 955s, a 957. So we had a little posse of Cayennes that were gonna head into the wilderness and get some cool content. So other than me not being there, how did the trails compare in Colorado versus North Carolina? The trails honestly weren't that difficult in the beginning. Cars were being challenged, we were being challenged as drivers a little bit but nothing that I wasn't confident in tackling. That said, I knew based on the signs that we saw, things were gonna get hairy. Pretty much every time we came across someone on the trail, they had something to say to us. We just saw an ATVer who basically laughed and asked us if we knew where we were headed. He just said he was gonna turn around to watch us all smash our bumpers in the sides of our cars. So, this may be the last time we see the car here. This may be the last time we see the car here. Last time we see the car here. A little bit worried, I'm not gonna lie. That dude was like, definitely telling us we're screwed. So I guess we'll see how this goes. Aaron led the way and showed us how to tackle the first feature. Germany! 
Once it was my turn to go, I may have gotten a little bit overzealous because I was enjoying the smoke that my retires were making. That said, I was able to climb this obstacle without too much difficulty. Dude, what the frick? That was sick. I'm shaking. How was that? That was exhilarating. That was, that was, it. look at it, look back. Look, just look at it. That was insane. It wasn't the easiest thing, but the rig, the Cayenne, totally capable. My driving abilities, questionable. Questionable, but still got up where we needed to get it up. It was pretty evident that what we had gone up against so far wasn't the extent of what we were about to see. I think after we lost the first Cayenne after snapping an axle, that was like a little bit of reality that hit. But seeing one of those cars go down and then realizing, okay, like we're gonna probably have to drag this out. How far were you guys in on the trailer? We were a few miles in at that point. Okay. With one Cayenne left behind, we continued on the trail up the mountain towards the next peak. Smooth and steady. With each obstacle getting more and more difficult, my confidence in the Cayenne actually began to grow. Overconfidence, however, isn't always a good thing. Order throttle, you know. <laughs> there we go, right there. Come on, baby. Hit it. There we go. Mama's got a new pair of shoes. It wasn't until uh, maybe two or three features where Cole got stuck climbing up a really thin single track section to actually where we were planning to kind of stop because we saw it in the distance. It was like this really nice flat parking spot. He got stuck like right before that. It was funny. It wasn't a big deal. Like, you know, car wasn't in a, in a bad situation. Kyan actually towed it out. Okay. You know, first time Check. we got to be a tow vehicle. <laughs> So you got the shots, you had two or three features that were pretty cool. One Cayenne down, one Cayenne stuck. Why didn't you stop there? I mean, when you put it like that, it made a lot of sense just to stop. My adrenaline was pretty freaking cranked. But yet again, friendly local stopped by in his truck. It was like three kids, two dogs hanging out the back, a wife that was giddy. He said that we would be stupid not to keep going. And we said, why? He said, because there's a water feature that you absolutely have to see. I was like, this is gonna be casual. Like this is, actually isn't gonna be bad. So we honestly went back and forth a bit uh, because it was already starting to get kind of late for what Ethan and I were comfortable with in terms of time. We And this is right before going home. We were supposed to fly back the next morning. Yeah, and honestly, no cell reception. Like you are super deep. So there was a lot of stuff left to do. So all signs were pointing, stop, turn, turn around. around. You got the shots. We even you had space, we even had space to turn around where we were. When you look over and it's just a sheer cliff with a couple hundred feet drop, it's scary. And it, uh, it was honestly pretty hairy getting down there. Like admittedly, I've never seen Ethan scared or stop shooting. His camera was between Sorry. his legs. His eye, he was literally, would not look at me. Because if Ethan had to stop shooting, I think I would have probably been like, let's turn around. So you're at the bottom of this river crossing. You've ignored all the signs. But there were technically no actual physical signs, which I actually wish that there were. Either telling me not to do it, telling me how to do it properly. So, and I'm not blaming that. I'm just saying I wish there was something physically there to tell me. I mean, I replay this whole scenario back in my head, I don't know, probably a million times since this has happened. First kind went through, Aaron took their car through, and it was so eerie because he was going at a speed where it looked like the car was honestly starting to drift down the river. I, I, I got so nervous, but anyway. I can't even explain this because it is like giving me anxiety. What felt like three hours, I think, was like a 30 second decision. And so, yeah, I. I you did it. I did it. Go! Having already felt an engine hydro lock on my focus, I knew pretty quickly what situation I was in. Don't, don't turn it off. Don't, don't turn it off. Yeah, don't turn it off. Just keep going. And everybody go. was kind of yelling at me, like, keep going. I was yeah. like, I'd keep, I was going, yelling, if keep I, going. If I could keep going, I'd keep going. So in that scene where you literally stop in the middle of the river, it's still running. What it's, kept you from just like... It's, it's not still running, so that it looks like it's running. Because the exhaust but is burbling. But the exhaust is burbling, and it's literally just the, the exhaust taking on water and burping it out, essentially. He turned off. It's hydro lock. Squinch it. Did it stop? Did it stop? 
Hell yeah. I subconsciously felt like that was gonna happen, and then when it happened, it was like, of course this happened. Yo, Ben, what's going on, bro? I hate my life. You just blew up your mini motor. This one's way more expensive. Told you you'd turn around up there. Yeah. I wanted to. I wasn't even worried about the fact that I had just hydrolocked an engine. I was more so concerned with what that meant for repercussions for everything else. I started thinking about the fact that we didn't have cell phone reception. I thought about the fact that our team didn't know where we were. I thought about the liability of the whole thing. I thought about how dumb I looked and, had, and you know, there's all these scenarios where like, I didn't care about the car. I literally, right off in my head. You can almost see it in my eyes where I'm just like kind of glazed over because my head kind of goes to the extreme reality of like we're not getting this out and not even in like a oh poor me look what I did kind of what just just like and the people around me were completely opposite They're, these are off-road people so like even the jeep guys were coming over and lending a hand and they just wanted to fix it in the moment they were ready to go and even, they were the optimistic ones oh, there for the lack of me yeah they want they wanted to pull the car apart they want to start looking at it. and in my head I was like I felt what happened I know this thing has probably a bent rod if nothing else, like the amount of water I was sitting in, and I knew the electrical systems were underneath my feet, I just knew that like... There was no way out. Yeah, even if we got this thing to limp, like to get it out because of what we just came through, it's not like we just needed to drive it down the street or get it to the shop. It was like, this car needed to be 100% to drive out of here. <laughs> and there was no chance of it getting there. Remember, we had already broken one kind that needed to get dragged out, so that was still sitting three miles deep into the oh, trails. God. And just the fact that we had an FCPO branded vehicle literally sitting in the forest, in the middle, of nowhere, in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of parts and stickers. Not a good feeling. Of course it starts downpouring on us. Why, it was a beautiful day all day. Literally standing there starting to work and it starts downpouring. Oh, while well, trying to make a flight back in less yeah, than Yeah, and you can hours. see in Ethan's eyes, like, I just felt guilty. I felt so guilty for what I put him through, what I was putting the, the Berg people through. And it was, and then I started thinking, like, all for what? You know what I mean? Uh, yes, we were excited to make this series. Yes, we wanted to go to Colorado, we wanted to do all this stuff, but it was just, like, super frustrating. Uh, super disappointed in myself. Like this was a, mis a mistake I personally, you know, take ownership of. Like this was, this was me. This was Ben making this mistake, putting us, the company, the car, me in that situation, and like that weighs heavily on my conscience. Like I'm a human, I have an ethical code. Because this weighed so heavily on my conscience, like I went back and actually reached out to the the people who actually maintain these trails, specific trails. And the reality is, like this isn't constant battle for the off-road community. Is one, people knowing their own personal abilities, knowing their rigs' abilities, and then honestly knowing what they can and can't do or should or shouldn't try or how to do it properly. So now I know how I should have approached the river. I know that I would have wanted to measure how deep it was. I should have checked my intake situation. I, all these things that, look, when you're in the moment and your adrenaline's cranked up and you're with a huge group of people and everybody's doing it, not that that's an excuse, but that's just the reality of the situation. At what point did you think about all the hard work that we put into the Cayenne before dipping the toes in the river. Honestly, it didn't even cross your mind. It didn't, it didn't even come close to crossing my mind. I went in such a different direction. See, Did if I, I was there, it would have been vacuum pump, valve cover gaskets, <laughs> the two back bolts in the corner, specifically <laughs> the air compressor. That would have been crossing my yeah. mind before we dipped the toes. Yeah, I wish those kicked in a little higher before those I Those were the it. signs you needed, not yes. river crossing up ahead. That would have been helpful. So Ben now would have told Ben them, Slow down, dude. Don't ignore the non-signs. <laughs> Don't ignore the moral signs. Yes, exactly. And just listen to your gut. I mean, me and Ethan's gut said, stop, don't do this. Clearly we did. <laughs> so what, you just decided to leave it behind? We honestly didn't have much choice. The reality was that we had to leave the Cayenne behind. You know, the guys from Berg had a shop to run the next morning. It's not like we could just camp out there for the night and work on the car overnight and go get parts. So lucky for us, you know, we had met those Jeep buddies who offered to basically camp overnight with it as they had planned to anyways. Um, they were just gonna watch over the car. And from there, Ethan and I essentially packed up into the two remaining Cayennes and had to head out because we had a lot to figure out. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate you so much. Best I'll say we'll can. consider you paid security. Yeah. We'll keep it on it best we can and have a couple Thanks, beers for us. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Big deal. Thank, Thank you guys. Thanks. Take care.
So at this point, you're wet and dirty with a broken kind stuck in the middle of Colorado. Your wife has no idea where you are. Your job has no idea where you are. What's the next move? I plan to get it out. So remember that flight we had to catch? We actually ended up back in Connecticut that next morning, but then back in Colorado the very next day. With the help of a loaner car and tools from our friends at Berg, a camera in hand, and some parts from back at FC Piero, I found myself back in Colorado, ready to get the Cayenne out. Well, I do want to say one of the coolest things about this, uh, in kind of a messed up, twisted way, is it's pretty amazing what the car community is willing to do for a complete stranger. So I posted last night about 9 p.m. on a Facebook group, a Colorado off-road Facebook group that I need to help. Uh, in about 15 minutes, I had 60 comments, a bunch of bunch of messages, people really outreaching and, and trying to help out. So that's why last night at 11 p.m. I booked a flight for 8 a.m. this morning and ended up here. Where is here exactly? Just outside Denver, Colorado, completely by myself. If you notice that this episode feels a little more scrappy than the previous ones, that's just because it had to be. We're going to meet up with the group. Uh, I think we're gonna have four vehicles. I haven't met any of these guys. I've just been talking to one guy, John. Kind of excited to see their rigs because they seem like they're pretty experienced with pulling stuff out. But yeah, it's pretty amazing what strangers are willing to do. Uh, it's the middle of the week, it's a Wednesday, uh, middle of the day, um, and still, again, willing to put in the time and effort to come out here and at least give it a try. Uh, again, I'm not sure if we're gonna be successful or not, but just the fact of the matter that we're out and actually trying is pretty rad. This thing is beefy. Uh, thanks, man. I mean, it's only four miles down to the river. You've, have you ran hack I have not. Okay. Oh. So, I mean, yeah. based on the you should be all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, for what it's worth, it was sick until I didn't come back. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's a couple couple of rock climbing spots are not too bad, but I, my goal is to be at least halfway up whatever trail we're taking back up before it gets dark. That would be sweet. Yeah. So just remember, if a Porsche can do it, you guys can do it. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not worried about getting down there. I'm no, worried about dragging a Porsche yeah, back yeah, yeah, up yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> That's it's a German tank too. Yeah. So the goal was set. Get into the trail and get the Cayenne back up by dark. It's a bit ironic this time. Mark, 2003 TJ Rubicon. Hey Josh, this is uh, 2019 uh, JL uh, Henrietta. I'm Matt Parker, and this is a uh, 91 Toyota pickup. This thing looks light. Uh, it's about 39.50, oh. right around 4,000 pounds. Right. Cody Gardner, and this is my 97 Jeep Cherokee. Basically stock. Basically. <laughs> hey, what's up? It's my 95 Forerunner. A little more than stuff. <laughs> On these first section of trails, with the experience these guys had, it was relatively smooth sailing all the way up. It was honestly pretty fun to watch their rigs and their experience show how it's done without much trouble or struggle. The Cayenne is, after all, a fully loaded leather clad luxury SUV. The fact that it was able to do this stuff still makes me proud. We are, I'd say, about halfway through the halfway through the trail so far. Um, we've got John leading, Cody and I are behind him, and uh, we're making really good time. Again, kind of weird being back here so soon. Like last night, I was in Connecticut in bed with the family, and the next day here we are. But we're making decent time. We're getting into some of the more tighter technical stuff coming up, and then uh, anxiously awaiting seeing the Cayenne, seeing what's left of it. Hopefully it's it's untouched. The guys have been optimistic, which is nice. I need that. 
because uh, I'm pretty much thinking worst case scenario. So we're basically fighting daylight, um, hoping to get down there and either get the car running before it gets dark or at least have a plan to get it out um, pulling wise. All right, Cody, we're coming up to my, my biggest fear of this entire thing, which is actually this one corner. I'm trying to figure out how the hell we're gonna bring a car around this. If not, maybe we go over. We can definitely put a snatch block on that tree, pull it up, yep. and then winch it back uh, this way without the snatch block. See, we, we can make it happen. Already. We followed. Yeah, true that. We can on a kick up camping spot, at least. That is very true. So we're about to come around the corner to where the cayenne's sitting. Let's uh, cross our fingers. I'm pretty nervous right now, not gonna lie. Oh man, I hate to break it to you. I'm kidding, she's gonna wait. Oh shit. Whew. Oh my She's good. Man, what a relief. Holy shit. I must be out fishing. Yeah, yeah, I don't know who would leave her. Of course, I have turbo down there. <laughs> well, first thing complete. Absolutely. I thought the Baja's would be gone, dude. Yeah. At least that. Nobody touched it. I'm it's surprised. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Man. I'm surprised with the tents go back. Oh, wrong teeth. Okay. Well, yes, this was a squad that was fully prepared for recovery. It wouldn't hurt to try to get the Cayenne started to drive out on its own. With a full set of parts and tools that we didn't have last time, we would try everything possible to get the Cayenne out under its own power to make the recovery that much easier. Hate to be that guy, but while I was in the car, what happened? Okay. Other than losing that socket for a good 10 minutes? We got the socket. Yeah, we got the socket. With a stick. Engine rotates. Five times over. Yeah, I would really like didn't. There's still a possibility it may have a bent rod or something, yeah. but in my experience, if it a hydro lock, that the rod would be bent to the effect that we you couldn't rotate it, it over. Yeah. If we can get her to crank, I'd feel confident about trying to crank it. Yeah. If there's any water left in the cylinders, it should shoot it out. Yeah. And then if everything's good at that point, then let's see if we can get everything together. How's it looking on the inside? Uh, so those two TCU units were, are still pretty wet, but I'm gonna swap those out really quick. So you I have two new ones? I have two new ones. Oh. I'm gonna put those in, and then I don't know what else we need for power, like why else it would click if it's gonna continue it to should click. Be, that should be it. Yeah. Like if it's not communicating with the transmission to communicate with the neutral safety switch, it's gonna kill power right. to the starter. Start. Okay. So if we can get power coming out, we should be good. Okay, cool. Yeah, it went back. That went up. All right, let's see. Oh, oh. Yeah, put that battery in it. Hell yeah. <laughs> With the car fully turning over, there was hope the Yippie Cayenne could be driving out on its own power. There was no doubt in my mind that the engine had damage and would need some work, but the vibe was positive once we heard it crank. I was like, it spins, let's go. Yeah. It's getting dark. It turns over though, so that's uh -huh. good news. Oh yeah. Cool. <laughs> the only thing that I've ever seen that's worse than that is a Chrysler Sebring. And they're underneath the passenger side wheel well. Oh. oh you gotta yeah. take the tire off to change the tire. <laughs> yeah, no wonder it. Go figure you can't find a 10 millimeter. You need that? Yes. I got that. Oh, that's that seat costs more than my whole blazer. I mean, look, first, everything's on it, so it's not, one it's, box checked. Yeah. It's not fun if it's easy. <laughs> that's true, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. You know, no good stories ever come from the easy days. That's very true. Hey, if we get this running and driving out of here, it's time for a beer. Huh? No freaking pizza, no freaking beer. <laughs> Just flex seal the bottom, you're fine. Too soon, dude. <laughs> While the engine may have been hydro-locked, the electronics that lived into the seat that got completely submerged were our biggest concern. Without that, the engine wouldn't have a chance to turn over at all. That battery is no wonder. bigger than I expected. <laughs> Let me try and get some more water out. Where's that? Did we put that jump pack away? It's a brand new battery. What the yeah, but they don't always come fully charged. 
It didn't push out a lot of water either. Uh, Alright, she uses no cut. Okay. Go ahead. Let's put uh, let's put plugs in it. Yeah, let's put it back together. Mm, sounded good. <laughs> With the engine continuing to turn over, no more water coming out, and time ticking by, the decision was made to reassemble the engine. Even with a slight sound of what was likely a bent rod, we had nothing left to lose by simply trying to fire this thing up. Oh yeah, the glove, dude. Just like that. Yeah, and then it just turns into locks. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That is the right one. Super satisfying. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't give me a warm and fuzzy, but... No, I mean, they should see. Should see yeah. Looking back at this now, all I can think about is the fact that this is what the car community is about. Newly acquainted off-road friends, turning wrenches together, sharing an adventure, all with the hopes of getting myself and this car out of here to see a trail on another day. Yep, that hurts. Even with that slight sound of rod knock, we really had nothing left to lose by trying to fire this thing up. Oh. Oh, Ooh, yeah, remember me saying we got all the water out? Remember that whole bit about the car looking like it was running when it was stuck, when really it was the exhaust system taking in water? Put it in neutral, drag it over here on this little hill. Might not be a bad idea. Yeah. John had the idea to try and put the Cayenne on an angle to flush out any water left in the exhaust with the help of some gravity. Little bar. Good stop. A lot of water came out, though. A lot of water. A lot of water came out. And just like that, we had officially hydro-locked the engine. It was time to get straight to recovery mode as the sun began to set behind the mountain. OK, let's, uh, let's get it back over here, face that way, and start rigging. Yeah, yep. That was it. OK. All right, let's, let's start rigging. Rig yeah. Damn it. Let's pull it down to the open right there so we can face it that way. Yeah. If we had limitless time, tools, and resources, it would have been great to spend more time flushing the entire system out and trying to get the car properly running. That said, given the circumstances, as a team, we did what we could and had to remember the true goal of the day, and that was safely getting back out. Whoa. Interesting. That's a I don't know, that's it. No, it's like a vent. It just sprayed out a ton of water. Yeah, it did. Cool, let's, uh, let's do let's this. Do All right. Oh, we got the tires free. A little longer than a few minutes later. So we're about 30 minutes in and we've gone maybe 200 yards. Uh, honestly, it's probably going to take 16 hours. It's about 7.30 p.m. right now. I'll be surprised if we don't see the sun come up. It wasn't too long until we hit our second recovery obstacle. Nothing like a swift reminder to make sure when winching, you're using the strongest tree possible to take the load you're putting on it. Sometimes you pick wrong. No one tell Courtney about that. What? What? You good? Yeah, I'm fine. Hey, you good? Yeah, I'm good. 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 Hey, you Was dead. I think we gotta hook up to that big boy. If he can get down here. Yeah, yeah he's, he's coming. coming. We realized for this initial climb, we were going to need a four car chain to be able to pull the cayenne up and over the steep rocky terrain. After clearing out the fallen tree and debris, we got back to it. Flashback. 
All right, Cody, we're coming up to my, my biggest fear of this entire thing, which is actually this one corner. End of flashback. This is the part I've been fearing the whole time is this hard left. It's really gnarly. And with the train of cars, it's gonna be really difficult to get around it. Yeah, I like that better. John's trying to back up this hill. I know. So that he can then winch me up straight and then we can pull the car to the left. But it's kind of sketchy backing down this. It feels like you're leaning, but you're not that bad. I know. Look, you're going to be flat. You're right about flat. A little later. John's winch is not working. So we're going about an hour winching up this. <laughs> he just bashed the remotes. Few moments later. After struggling for about an hour trying to winch the car up and over, we ended up putting too much side load on the front tire, inevitably blowing the tire right off the wheel. Now lucky for us, I did have the spare for a moment just like this. Much, much later. Well, yeah, that progress. We we're making serious progress, yeah. Of course, the air suspension has since failed and my brakes are dragging. We blew a tire out, but we're making progress. As you can hear, the rear e brake being stuck. Why wouldn't it? My front end is completely slammed. The bags are both deflated, so that's great. But we move on. John's drive shaft just popped again. But we're making progress. One minute, 37 seconds later. We move 15 more feet. But then John broke his drive shaft again. <laughs> Poor John. Got a very solid three car train going right now. My air suspension being out is a giant bummer. Um, but I'm just being pulled by both the 4Runner and the Jeep right now. So we've only got two pull. We head up to a three. Uh, we've gotten up most of the steep hills. Uh, the last section has some massive boulders. And since I'm slammed, a little bit worried about that. And then we also have to drop me down with the winch off of the two big boulder sections. So it should be interesting. Uh, we're about six hours in right now. And honestly, ahead of where I thought we might be. So I'm staying optimistic. Just thinking about how the fact that I need to put a new freaking engine in this after we just did all the work to it. But I digress. Let's get out of here first. So we're starting the ascent now. Figuring out if we're going to hook up uh, Josh's larger Jeep to the back of the Cayenne. Because I don't have much for brakes. And I'm bouncing off everything. So. I stacked some rocks on the little obstacle that's right there. Okay. And we shouldn't be, use your, your center shouldn't hit anything. Okay. All right, just stay left because if you go right, you're going to fall off and it's we're going to drag you across it because you're not going to have time to react. So. All right. All right, we gravy? Yeah, we're gravy. Let's roll. We're about to hit the first big boulder obstacle. Kind of nervous about this. Don't really have brakes. Um, and it's a long, long drop down, especially with the front end just dragging ass. So this might get interesting. All right, John, tighten up. Yeah, he's good. You're strapped on both sides, so you'll be all right. You're in a good line, just hold it. You're good, John, slowly. Keep moving slow. Hold. Oh, okay. Yep, you're, you're on strap on the back, so you're all right. I'm a little bit driver. There you go. All right, hold up, John. Are you? You need pull or? Are you I feel like I'm double tension right now. I don't know. You're not. You have no uh, tension in the back. I bump, yeah, I bump forward. Hey, pull forward, John. Just a little. Keep going. You're on frame. You're on frame. Slide her down, slide her down. 
Oh, look at that. Beautiful. John, go forward. Slow. All I want to do is get the rope out from under him. So, remember those rock sliders we installed? Don't think this is exactly how we had planned to use them quite yet, but they're already saving what was left of the kayak. Yeah, you gotta go hard, passenger. Yeah, you're down. That's good, let's disconnect the brake vehicle. Well, that's what I'm saying, we need to disconnect because he needs to be free to get down. Hey, I'm not sliding all over the place. Hey. I like this rock stuff. Look at that. <laughs> like a downhill slalom. So nobody's attached to me. I gotta try not to slide all the way down this hill and flip this thing off of the cliff. Or not the cliff, but the ledge that's down there. Uh, it's definitely difficult without vacuum in the brake system, well, without brake booster, and then no ABS. So yeah, I'm basically locking up. Uh, not feeling super confident right now, but we're on the last leg. That's it? Yeah. Ugh. Now I got you. Here, I'll, let me chalk them, have them hold the brakes, and then uh, we'll reset. All right, hold on the brake. Yep. Hey, can you just pay out a little bit, like a foot maybe, just to make sure he's going to hold? Yeah, he just, it just stopped. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're good. A little bit more to, oh, there we go. All right, go ahead. One hour later. Well, it's 2.30 a.m. The cayenne is out. The night is still not over. We still need to get it picked up and figure out where I'm staying, figure out everything else. But the freaking cayenne is out thanks to basically a group of strangers. And they're not really strangers anymore after this freaking adventure. And just another reason why our armed forces are badasses. All these guys work for the army and took the time to come out and help me out. I'm pretty sure they all have uh, have to work tomorrow at like 6 a.m. So they're gonna get maybe three hours of sleep. All for a stranger. Pretty wild. Holy god damn it! Right here, dude. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. All right, so we're still gonna go take you down to the parking lot down there. Yeah, that's what we we're talking. I just talked about, uh, about that. Okay. It's um, just. I know it's not as far out. No, 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 it's but fine. It's still as like, long as I can, yeah, yeah. I can try and get someone out there. Oh, yeah, dude. I did not think that was gonna happen. Oh no, man. That turned out great. Thanks, Mike. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. Oh yeah, dude. Glad you're able to get back over. All right, so everybody is airing back up. Um, we're officially completely out. Uh, we need to pull the Cayenne to a spot that it can actually get flatbed towed out. So then it can go probably to bird performance where we'll probably assess the situation. Honestly, car shot, engine shot, all those rough trails with no suspension probably did some damage. But the car's out, not sitting there. I don't have to keep thinking about it. Uh, we can come back to the project when the time is right. And yeah, I just couldn't be more grateful for the people who came out tonight and helped. Pretty amazing. Did not think this was going to happen, especially this week. So.